Hi everyone. This time I will record a more entertaining video. This will be a short one. Sometimes I chat with patients who come to my clinic. I ask them who referred them to me or how they heard about me because I do not advertise on Google. And there's a slogan on my website. Let me also briefly tell you about that. Well, I started undertaking penile enhancement procedures in 2004. I had one or two cases in the first year. There were two or three in 2005. Towards 2010, the number of patients began to increase. However, something interesting happened. In 2010 and 11, the number of cases exploded. I didn't understand why. It was really surprising. I noticed that patients were coming in from everywhere. When the number of cases exploded, I stopped doing rhinoplasty. No surgery. I abandoned rhinoplasty in 2010 or 11. It was an interesting development. I couldn't figure out why the number of patients increased suddenly. At that time, I was not advertising, nor did I have a website. I was not publishing stories in newspapers. I did not go on TV for this subject. So I was really wondering how so many patients came in. Because the events went like this. In 2004, the first patient I operated came for follow-up examination. After the final examination, we bid him farewell. And after that patient, I thought, this field of surgery will not grow. First of all, the surgery site is not visible. No one will see it. The patient will not show it. It's the genital area, right? No patient will talk about undergoing penile enhancement. So this is something to be kept secret. That's why I thought this field of surgery would simply not grow. It was not possible to advertise. You can't go on TV and talk about penile enhancement. But despite this, the number of patients suddenly peaked in 2010 and 2011, and patients from different places started to flock. I did not have a website. I did not appear on TV. I did not advertise on Google. So where did these patients come from? Two or three years passed. I focused on penile enhancement procedures. I stopped doing rhinoplasty. I haven't had rhinoplasty patients since then. A medical representative visited us. He promoted his products, we purchased something, then we had tea and started chatting. Then I talked about the situation. I told him that I now focused on penile enhancement. I said that the number of cases suddenly boosted after 2010 and I still could not understand why. I just couldn't figure it out. The representative said he knew why. I asked him how could he know. He said that there are internet forums where women share posts. He said that women were talking about me there. They were talking about their spouses and partners who had undergone the surgery and they were satisfied. When others asked which surgeon performed the surgery, he told me that my name was mentioned there. I was shocked. Normally, I expected male patients to promote me. Like, that's what you would think. The patient would refer his friends to me and so they would contact me. Well, it was not the patients, but their partners who advertised for me. It was really interesting. Just imagine, the wife or the girlfriend or the patient who had the surgery went to a forum where women shared posts and wrote about how they were satisfied with the surgery. I was shocked. After hearing this, I started to design my website. The catchphrase on the website was, this surgery will please not one, but two people. I had divorced back then, but I always preferred being monogamous. That is, when I'm married to or dating someone, I don't even think of another woman. I don't, I don't have lovers. I'm not that kind of person. That's why I said the surgery would please not one, but two people. Because I am monogamous. I thought that each patient would have a single spouse or a lover. Then one day, a Turkish patient from Germany came along. He was a handsome guy. He told me that he was married, but he also had five other lovers. <laughs> For a second, I thought about my own catchphrase. The, the surgery will please two people. I wondered if I was the only monogamous idiot. The man had five lovers. Besides, he was married, five girlfriends, himself and his wife, one surgery to satisfy seven people. For a moment, I thought I had been so naive. I will not satisfy not one but two people. Two, really. The man had five girlfriends apart from his wife. 
And that catchphrase suddenly seemed very stupid to me. So I changed the catchphrase. When you visit my website now, penisjerahisi.com, you will be welcomed by the slogan, a surgery that satisfies more than one person. So this is the story of that catchphrase. Actually, looking from a broader perspective, that is the truth. Many people have numerous lovers. Married men have lovers and so on. So, simply, with a single surgery, you will satisfy more than one person. Because this surgery is about sex. As such, it concerns a minimum of two people, right? Or maybe more. It's not something like rhinoplasty or an autoplasty. Autoplasty or rhinoplasty only concerns the patient. The others stare from afar. It has a visual aspect, but penile enhancement is totally different. It involves at least two people and it has a tactile rather than visual impact. This surgery aims sexual satisfaction. I have already talked about that before. This surgery is described incorrectly even in medical textbooks. Books always describe the surgery visually. They say fat is injected subcutaneously, blah, blah. But in fact, the patient's feedback showed me that the surgery will be incomplete in that manner. For instance, one of my patients told me this. After surgery, his girlfriend grabbed his erect penis from its base. She felt that the base of the penis was thin. Why? Because the penile structure extends into the body. Since then, when I inject fat into the shaft of the penis, I also inject fat into that inner section. Although not visible from the outside, it should feel full when grabbed. Okay? As such, the perspective in medical textbooks is misleading. They describe the surgery something like rhinoplasty or autoplasty. However, it's different. It has a tactile impact and concerns at least two people, sometimes even more. So, it is really interesting stuff. Well, we always learn about our shortcomings and mistakes through feedback from patients. And that's also how I changed that catchphrase. I guess I was quite naive for a long period. And now, however, it has been updated. See you.